Mama. What up, y'all? Welcome back to Whatever It's Live on WordSports.com. Me is joined by Spimo Rex, Hello. Young Chris, Microwave, Nick, Caleb, what? the colorblind, oh. or the explosive. Speaking of explosives, Dan Campbell spoke colorblind. about the uh, wide receiver three spot on the flagship with our guy uh, Jim, and uh, he had this to say. Like That's what Reynolds was for us. Josh Reynolds was the reliable guy. We could count. He's going to be where he's supposed to be, when he was supposed to be there. He could play any spot, and he'd make a critical catch for you. Uh, and then everything else, you know, you, you knew what you had in Saint, and JMO had some explosiveness at Gibbs and Laporte. That's great, but you need the steady, reliable when, you know, uh, when the ball needs to find you because coverage dictates it. And that's, that's, that's the guy we need to fit. Who is that guy? And so, mm-hmm. and that, that is important. Now, that being said, um, we want, we don't want to just keep a guy because he's receiver three, four, five. Like we want to keep the best players we have on the roster, and that could come in the running back room. You got anything else for Dan? I love Dan Campbell. Um, I love him like a father, mm-hmm. but I think he's overblowing that a little too much. I don't oh, think he is. You remember I think what stance got, I was when we lost Josh Reynolds to begin with? I think if you're worried about stable guys that you need to catch in, the, you've got two of those guys on your roster in Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta, but who are the beyond. first and second options in your passing attack and guys that are as stable as it comes. I understand wanting another guy, but I don't think for that reason. We don't need a guy to worry about, is he going to make – got two guys that you don't have to worry about that are going to be on time. They have some of the best hands in the league, and they always make the catch. Yeah, I think that's like a – I hate to do this to explain. That's like a sunshine and rainbows slap-ass way of looking at it. Like, it's – the reality is you do need – Multiple players, like you could. Trust. You have multiple players you can trust. That third receiver is one that I loved having, and, and Josh Reynolds. There were reps that Josh Reynolds seen. If I'm not mistaken, every single catch Josh Reynolds caught last year averaged the first down. Like mm-hmm. he was that reliable piece. The, the interesting point there, and I, I'm I, which we can extend that question. I, I did. I did want to play that to turn you guys as well. Yes, obviously you, you're not turned. You still don't give a shit about Josh Reynolds. You. I mean, I wouldn't say I don't give a shit about Josh Reynolds, but like I said, I. You've got two guys already that fit the exact thing that he was describing. So, would you? Is it nice to have a third one? Well, we yes, had we had sure. those last year too. But I don't still, think it's as detrimental. You still needed that Josh Reynolds. Yeah, piece. but you have a guy who was a rookie, and he's obviously going to take a step forward. Who? Sam Laporta. He was there as, just as reliable. And as he was a rookie, last year. and so you expect him to take a step forward and be even more of an offensive factor. Yeah, I don't know. I still think you need that third guy. Not need. Obviously, not need. Not a necessity, but it's yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know, actually. So I'm saying, receiver it, position specifically, you might. Would I rather have one than not have one? Yes, but I don't think it's this dire need because we don't have anybody we can throw the ball to when we need a first down. No, you literally have two of those guys. I still think it's a need. Something you definitely want. You, I believe, are on Spitty's side, kind of, kind of picking at me for missing Josh Reynolds. But after hearing Dan Campbell miss him a little bit and just kind of waiting for somebody to step up, two days in a row now he's, he's brought this up. Dan Campbell. You quoted him, you described him as steady and reliable. Two things he wasn't in the NFC Championship game. Boom! (laughs) But, with that being said, he was a massive piece in getting to that NFC Championship game for this team. I recognize that, I know that, and he was my number one to blame in that game for the reason the Detroit Lions lost. The reason he was open on those plays is because other guys like St. Brown, yes. like Sam Laporta, like a Jameer Gibbs, like a Jamison Williams, get so much attention where I think you do need that reliable third wide receiver because he is going to have space in coverage to take advantage because all the other guys are covered. Yeah, And I, at this point, do regret not bringing in Josh Reynolds, to be quite honest, for Let's the contract go. that he was paid for. If Dan Campbell is saying his name personally and calling him out, and for saying we need a guy that was like him, we should have brought just brought him back. If he already knew the offense, it's, he's super comfortable with Jared yeah. Goff. I don't understand why we didn't. Um, I think that was a miss on our part because DPJ hasn't stepped up. Um, besides oh. that, I mean, Antoine Green hasn't stepped up. Well, yeah, yeah, I think. He's gone now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I would have brought him in, to be quite honest, to answer your question. Yeah, and I guess the thing, too, at, at the NFL level, and this is why sometimes you'll see guys wide open and you, you'll be like, what the fuck? He was wide open. But, like, there's, like, particular Levels. reads. Yes. Yeah. Some routes are just to run guys off, so it opens up a situation for somebody else. Mm-hmm. That was the beauty of Sam Laporta. And that's why he was so crucial to, like, a lot of things we did. It's like, a lot of the routes, a lot of stuff that he saw, he was a dog, by the way, too. I, I want to go back on a statement I've made where I feel like some of it was a system or a lot of it was a system. No, Sam, Sammy Lapotz was still 
extending them out there, yeah. putting the shoulder down, doing what he needed to do. But he was he's crucial to that, and, and so was Josh Reynolds for certain those situations. Some guys ran off for Josh Reynolds to be open, and mm-hmm. you just want somebody reliable, I think, is a key word. So let, let, let me put it to you like this. Let, let's put it into context here. So we all think this Lions offense is going to be, regardless, one of, if not the best in the league, and even a historically great offense. But this wide receiver three, because I'm, I'm with Spencer on it, you know, I don't think it's a, it's a make or break. But is it the difference between the first and third ranked offense in the NFL this season? Like, like map out to me where how how it can yeah how how just, important just it can that be. reliability like uh i mean i pull well, i know the reason for josh like, reynolds if you're just if you're just guesstimating like is this is not getting a wide receiver three that you know and trust in this lion's offense is that the difference between them having the first ranked offense and the fourth ranked offense or where, where do you see like that's i think a way we can kind of contextualize how important it is by stating that it's a, obviously a luxury and a good luxury to have but it's not a make or break so on 64 receptions last year, Josh Reynolds averaged 15 yards per reception. So like meaning like every every catch he had was mm-hmm. for like a first down. Mm-hmm. Some of them may have been crucial third downs. Some of them, I don't know if you guys could think back to him, which we saw out of Jamie a little bit today too, were like those back of the end zones just plucking them out of the air touchdowns. Yeah. Like he was reliable in that way. And I think, yeah, it, it can be the difference because in crucial moments, more particular red zone reps, third downs, you want somebody you can rely on because, hey, we're running our best guy here because we know he's going to draw a couple of extra people. We need you to make this catch. We don't, we don't go to you often, but because we know you're going to be open here, we need you to be reliable. And I just don't think they found that guy yet. I don't know why they're not looking at Khalif Raymond more if they're worrying about dependability in hands. Because yeah. he's always been yeah. dependable, reliable, and on I time just, and on target. And maybe they're looking for somebody, a bigger body, to yes, do that role. I think that's what it is. And I, I think... Cause I think Josh Reynolds reps or catches were like they were he, he's yeah. a longer guy it's like over the middle of the field he's back to jumping out of there back to chris's point i think the offense is going to be better this year than it was last year because i think the jmo uh factor is going to provide more than the losing josh reynolds factor but like you said i mean when i'm looking at it, would i rather have another guy that is dependable and reliable yes obviously you mm-hmm. want as many of those guys as you can and i had faith that Donovan Peoples Jones could have been that guy, but he has absolutely fallen on his face. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Jambo drives you up in a explosiveness, score at will type of way. Yeah, where like this conversation is more about like dependability. You know who's a guy who has been relatively dependable and been over the middle and catching balls for a while in this league? Juan Ross Saint Brown, Juju Smith Schuster. I think he's broken. Doo doo shit poopster. I mean, if they want to bring him in, I'm, I have no, I have, I have, I have, my, I have uh, zero issue with it. But here. I just have a strong feeling that, like, I mean, he got cut before cuts. He did. So something's up, and that's not like they have a great wide receiving core in New England. They don't. So it's like, but again, we've we've talked about that being yeah. a new coach trying to could be the fact they bought that new Jaron Dern. Yeah, jersey, true. He did buy Jaron Dern jersey, breaking the all time MLB record in a single day. I don't know if that was true. Oh, that was true. That's you guys were talking about before the show. Yeah, it's you crazy. See that? No, is that that's true? Wild. Yeah, it's probably. Is that confirmed? The, I don't know if it's confirmed, but it might be all the fellas down south. He definitely. <laughs> <is>. <laughs> but um, this <laughs> Josh Reynolds. So you're shouting out your cousins or something. It's all the, it's all, it's all the good old boys <laughs> and the and the frat boys buying those. Dude, that's gonna be the number one hitter of frat season for sure. Jersey Rama, all the frat parties, you're going to see a lot of yeah. Jaron Duran jersey or whatever his name is. You're going to yeah. see a lot of those. And as much as I, you know, kind of hated on Josh Reynolds, as in I was maybe the biggest hater of the whole Josh Reynolds you were, thing because for sure. he, he ruined the season. But <laughs> I cannot lie that he did help get us to that point. I mean, he threw up 80 yards in that first playoff game at Ford Field. And like I spoke to earlier, he was just a low-key wide receiver that was able to find space and make those big catches with his big frame. We thought DPJ was going to be that. He hasn't been. And to hear Dan Campbell actually say and name drop Josh Reynolds, that's what worries me the most. I mean, they love the guy. They love Josh Reynolds. And you know how this how this team gets about their guys, about dudes. Then, They're dudes. Then why He's they, one of our guys, man. Then why Serpent they, of death. Why'd they let him walk then? I don't know. I think it was a. It's not like they don't have the money to pay him. Yeah. He got offered. That's what I'm he got offered more by Denver, but it, none of all of it was guaranteed. But I think you have the opportunity to make it. Remember, like in the last game of the season, he was trying to hit those bonuses because he really only signed here. I believe his extension was like one to two million. Yeah. I mean, it was a dick. He got offered like six from Denver, which like I would have paid him six million. 
I say I would have too. You got forty-two million. Got forty-two million dollars. No, no, we do. 